Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that you and your family are doing well today. I want to thank you very much for joining me for this podcast. I thought I would do this to to let you know about an experience I had a couple of years ago. I've been wanting to do this video for some time, and just uh, rabbits keep jumping up. But um, two years ago, October of 2019, a pastor of a church in Woodland Park, Colorado, right, which is right outside of Colorado Springs. Uh, asked me to come and do my seminar, Clouds Without Water. The pa- the uh, pastor is a wonderful guy named Jeff Gwynn, really good brother, just think the world of him, and he pastors Highland Bible Church there in Woodland Park, Colorado. And, and Jeff really wanted me to come and do my seminar at his church because uh, being right outside of Colorado Springs, well, Colorado Springs is the home of Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack is a prominent Word of Faith false teacher, and I talk about him some in my seminar, Clouds Without Water. And so he really wanted me to come and help equip his people. Not that any of his folks were really uh, swayed by Andrew Womack, but they all have friends and family members to varying degrees who are. And so uh, just to, to kind of help help equip them to know exactly how to engage um, Andrew Womack in his false teaching. And so, so I went. And while I was there, uh, we decided to go to Andrew Womack's uh, church slash Bible college, Karis Bible College. And uh, some of you probably know this about me. I, I try to go to these Word of Faith churches and conferences as often as I get an opportunity to do so. I've been to, I think, 17 or 18 different Benny Hinn Crusades. I've been to Kenneth Copeland conferences. I've been to Joyce Meyer conferences. I've been to Lakewood Church, Joel Osteen's church a couple of different times. I've um, Jesse Duplantis, you know, I mean, I've been to a lot of these things. And my purpose in going is because I want my teaching to not only be theologically sound, uh, and the theology of this would be enough in and of itself, but I, I want the experiential uh, element of that too might sound kind of like an odd thing for for me to say, but uh, what I mean by that is I want to I want to be in the trenches. I want to go to these things. I want to see what goes on with my own two eyes. Uh, I want I want to see what I want to hear what is being taught, and I want to talk to people. I want to engage people while I'm there and do my best to to speak the truth and love to them and pluck at least a few of the the brands from the fire and um, and so I have I've talked to hundreds if not thousands of people uh, at these at these events and uh, with you know varying degrees of success as you might imagine but um, anyway so we had this opportunity to go to to Karis Bible College and just look around so the pastor Jeff Gwynn and I and another brother from the church we went and uh, got there. Now, when I went, I was expecting it to be a large compound, if you will. And uh, but it was it exceeded my expectations, and not in a good way. But it it, it was it, it was far larger than what I'd even imagined. I could not believe how large this place was. The land, the spread that they had, and the buildings are just amazing uh everything state of the art we went into the auditorium that have that i've seen on tv on many occasions and uh i mean just everything is top notch state of the art top of the line everything everything from the sound system to the to the chairs to the carpet i mean the stage everything uh and the the kind of the lobby the various classrooms they have top notch i mean you're talking tens of millions of dollars at least uh, at least I would love to know the final uh, price tag on this thing but it just in just massive massive and um, so I as I was going around I was on my little electric three-wheel scooter and I talked to a few of the students that I saw there and I, I went into the bookstore and uh, in the bookstore I saw pretty much what I expected to see all of the books by Andrew Womack, of course. They carried all of his DVDs and books and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Marilyn Hickey, Essek W. Kenyon, the usual suspects that you see in Word Faith bookstores. 
Joseph Prince. And uh, so as I was leaving the bookstore, I decided to go up to the counter and uh, I talked to the young lady who was working there in the bookstore and I said, uh, I said, have you by chance heard of a DVD called Clouds Without Water? And she said, no, I don't think so. I said, well, it's an interesting DVD. It's by this guy named Justin Peters. And and uh, it's, it's really interesting. You might want to look into possibly carrying it here in the bookstore. It's got some pretty interesting stuff in there. And and uh, and she said, oh, okay. And so, um, you know, I bid her a good day and, and I left. And as I was leaving, I kind of looked back and, and she was appeared to be Googling it, Googling Clouds Without Water and Justin Peters, I guess. So I... I very much doubt that they ended up carrying that in their bookstore. But as I left the bookstore, went into the kind of right immediately there into the forum, I suppose, um, or lobby area, not forum, but lobby area. And um, I saw this young man sitting in a seat. What you can't tell is that outside of those massive windows is a, a spectacular view of Pikes Peak. Just an incredibly beautiful area. And uh, I went up to this young man, I motored up to him on my scooter, and I introduced myself. And he told me, now I'm going to change his name because I don't know what this young man is doing right now, but um, let's call him Mike. It's not his name, but let's call him Mike. And uh, I, I said, hey, Mike, um, you know, I, uh, it said, I'm Justin Peters, and he told me his name was Mike. I said, well, Mike, I'm preaching at Highland Bible Church this week and would love for you to come. Uh, I think I, this was on a Monday, so it would have been like Monday night and the next night. So I said, you know, tonight, tomorrow night, if you could come at whatever time it was, I uh, would love for you to come. And, and uh, you know, he kind of gave me a, oh, okay, you know, not real committal kind of thing. Oh, okay, well, thank you for that. And, and uh, I said, Mike, what are you reading there? I noticed he had a Bible in his lap. I said, Mike, what are you, what are you reading there? And, and he said, uh, I, I, he said, look down and he said, I'm reading First Kings. And I look, and yeah, he's reading First Kings. And I, I said, well, Mike, can I ask you a question? And, well, at first I said, Mike, are you a student here? And, and he wasn't yet. He said that he was not a student then. This was October of 2019. But he told me that he was going to enroll at Karis Bible College the next semester. So it would have been spring of 2020. And um, <laughs> which... COVID and that um, Andrew Womack couldn't do anything about COVID, but I digress. So I, I said, Mike, um, do you believe that it's always God's will for a person to be healed? And he said, yes, I do. Of course, I knew that he did going to Karis or about to attend Karis. And I said, well, Mike, can I, I've come across a few verses and um, they're interesting to me. Could I get you to look at these verses for me and give me your take on them? And he's like, okay. And so I, I said, Mike, turn over to Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. And so he turned over there and and um, I said, Mike, can you read that for me? Now, Exodus four eleven says, uh, The Lord said unto him, unto Moses, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes him dumb or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? But instead of reading it, Mike just stared at it. He was just like, just stared at that verse and wouldn't say anything. And I said, Mike, after an awkward pause, I said, Mike, can you read that? And again, just, just stared at it. And so I read it and um, read it to him. And I said, Mike, that's God speaking there. That's God speaking. And God says, who has made man's mouth? Who makes him dumb, meaning mute, deaf, seeing, or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? And I said, Mike, what do you, what do, you do with that? And, the, and finally, he said, well, that's the Old Testament. Never mind that word faith people tend to spend most of their time in the Old Testament. But I said, uh, I said, well, well, Mike, that's not a, that's not a sound argument because the, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament too, and vice versa. And, and he he just said, well, that's the Old Testament. And I was like, okay, okay Mike, well, let, well, let's go to the New Testament. And so I asked him to flip over to Galatians chapter four. 
and reluctantly he tried to do so. He actually had a hard time finding Galatians. I was I don't know what was going on with that, but he kind of stumbled around, and so I helped him find Galatians, uh, verse uh, chapter four, verse thirteen and fourteen, and that is where Paul says, "But you know that it was because of a bodily illness." that I came and preached the gospel to you the first time, and that which was a trial to you in my bodily condition you did not despise nor loathe, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus himself. And uh, I said, Mike, can you read that for me? And again, this was what I got. He just stared blankly at it and said nothing. And I, and I said, Asked him again, Mike, can you read that? And nothing. And so I read it for him. And I said, Mike, this is the Apostle Paul. This is this is the man who wrote roughly, you know, a third to a half, depending on who you think wrote the book of Hebrews, uh, of the New Testament. And I said, Mike, um, I said, this is the Apostle Paul, and he he directly says that he had a bodily illness, that he was sick. And Mike finally looked up at me and he said, that's what you say. I'm like, Mike, that's not what I say. That's what the Bible says. That's what you say. Dear ones, I literally could not get him to admit that what he was reading was in the Bible. And it was his own Bible. I mean, it was his own Bible, and he literally could not admit that what he was reading there was actually there. I mean, he it, it was like he could not read those verses because it com- those verses completely, and we could have cited others too, but those verses completely went against everything that he had been taught, everything that he believed. And you could just sense in him that his entire, the entire foundation of what he was, what he had been taught was, was shaken. And he did not know what to do with it. And I think he was, knowing word faith theology as I do, I think he was afraid. He was actually afraid to read it because you see in reading it in verbalizing those words, that would be a negative confession and you know the whole doctrine of positive confession, negative confession, word faith, whatever you speak will become physical reality. And he he literally would not read those verses. And uh and I I finally said, Mike, I said I teach against word faith theology. I said word faith theology is not biblical, and I briefly shared with him the real gospel. And I said, Mike, I really hope that what I've said to you today haunts you. I said, I hope it haunts you, and I meant that in a in a in the best possible way. I said, I hope it haunts you. I said, I hope it keeps you up at night because, Mike, you're. You're being deceived. And I said, Mike, I really hope and I really pray that you do not enroll here at Karis Bible College next semester. This is not a good college. This is You're not going to be taught sound theology. And, um, and he just, he never said anything else. I mean, the last words I heard him say were, that's what you say. Um, he wouldn't respond. And I would... And I left, and actually this picture, uh, I took that picture right after I kind of backed away from him and and uh, and left just staring out the window. And so uh, to this day, I have no idea. I don't know if Mike enrolled at Karis or not. Um, but it, it, it just goes to show you how, you know, how shaky word faith theology is and how they really have not been taught to rightly divide God's word of truth, and there is so much in the Bible that uh, goes against their theology, and when they're shown it, I mean, and these are very simple, clear, black and white texts, when they're shown it, they don't know what to do with it. And so he just pretended like it wasn't there, literally. That's what you say. 
So um, from t- I don't pray for Mike every day, but I do still pray for Mike from time to time when I think of him. So uh, maybe you could pray for Mike as well. Uh, I hope he's not at Karis. But anyway, that, it shows you, dear ones, if, if you're, you know, when you're dealing with someone, whether it's in Word of Faith or Seeker Sensitive or Roman Catholicism or name your favorite false religion, if if they are willing to look at the scriptures, if they're willing to reason from the Word of God, then that's a good sign. That's what you hope to see. But if their heels are so dug in that it does not matter what you show them from God's Word, that they just will not, they will not yield. Uh, it doesn't matter what you show them. Uh, if there's no willingness to have their theology challenged, by the plain meaning of the text, then there's no other card to play. There, there's nowhere else to go from there. You, know, you can talk about the weather, you can talk about who won the ball game or something like that, but uh, you're not going to reason with them. If they, will not, if they will not hear Moses, if they will not hear the prophets, right? Neither will they believe, even if someone were to come back from the dead. So, all right, dear ones, uh, just an inter- inter- one of the many interesting experiences I've had and uh, thought I would share that with you. So, the power is in the Word of God, and if people won't respond to that, they won't respond to anything. But you never know when the light may come on. You never know when that light may come on with someone. So anytime you have an opportunity, anytime you have an open door to share the truth with someone entrenched in a uh, false religion, take that opportunity. You never know when that Galatians chapter 1, 15 and 16 time, when it pleases the Lord, Paul said, when it pleased the Lord to reveal Christ to me, you never know when that time may come. So, all right. Thank you very much for watching, dear ones. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all.